My name is Barrett Brown. I'm a, a journalist. Uh, I, at some point, started working with the organization Anonymous uh, back in 2010 when they began uh, their aid projects for the Fusion Revolution. Uh, thereafter, uh, a series of events occurred that led us into a conflict with both the U.S. government and a number of companies uh, we call intelligence contracting firms, firms that provide various services, uh, clandestine, uh, often illegal services and products to governments around the world, and uh, which in this case have been caught going after uh, journalists and activists uh, in the U.S. on behalf of the U.S. government. At any rate, so we, we came... Uh, he came across a number of emails uh, from some company were able to expose the plots for the work and to some extent bring some attention to the yeah. Okay. Um, let me see if I can... I don't know. I'm not sure how to... Uh... Okay. Anyway, long story short, I was a journalist worked with Anonymous, uh, got very interested in how information flows uh, in our environment, and also into how uh, the internet now allows us to harness collective talents and ability of well-intentioned uh, people across the world uh, as a sort of counterpoint to existing institutions. Uh, to that end, over the last several years, have been preparing the release of something called Pursuance. Pursuance is a framework for large-scale collaboration. Uh, it provides a way for people with no pre-existing relationships to quickly and easily coalesce into uh, very dynamic, scalable, uh, evolvable entities. Uh, capable of doing a lot of the work that we've seen uh, made possible by the internet in the last 10 years. A lot of the stuff that Anonymous did that uh, a, lot of, a lot of small groups across the world have done uh, by finding people. Uh, but also to better do the things that are already being done on a more traditional basis. Uh, the work done by NGOs, nonprofits. Uh, these are organizations that exist already uh, are in kind of an interesting point because the internet, everyone vaguely understands, has a great potential not yet been realized. There hasn't been a lot of thought gone into the fact that here we have millions and millions of people out there who theoretically uh, support these organizations. They support an open society. They support transparency. They oppose corruption. Uh, they're increasingly well informed about what the problems are. But they have no recourse beyond traditional politics the most part, to solve these problems. Now, these organizations that exist right now, organizations like the American Civil Liberties Union in the U.S., or Reporters Without Borders, uh, et cetera, uh, they're still largely doing business in the same way that organizations did business before the Internet. Even if they have a website, uh, they're still recruiting slowly. Uh, they're doing it in a top-down way. They're not harnessing that energy that's out there. Uh, there's a fellow in, out of uh, Sweden, a rich, a rich Oxford, who founded the Pirate Party. And I wrote a book a few years ago, and there's a passage in that book that, that's very illustrative of this problem. Talking to the head of an NGO, a government organization, he tells him, the, your problem isn't the people who work for you. The problem, your problem is the thousands of people that want to work for you, but you don't let them. The pursuance system, among other things, going to allow these groups to better, uh, in a way that's not possible now, bring on thousands and thousands of people working for them in capacity, in a way that will uh, allow for experimentation, allow for uh, sort of independent action, allow for uh, sort of agents among, uh, you know, low-level people. That's what I was saying. The, uh, there, there's a number of things that we're trying to do with this pursuance system, and uh, you can you can see the basic prospectus at uh, pursuanceproject.org. Bottom line is it's an ecosystem for mass collaboration. It allows it's on an invitation basis. We've had about a thousand people sign up so far to be uh, considered for the system. 
everyone who comes in can is permitted to bring on other people into the system. Anyone who is uh, brought into the system can create their own pursuants. Uh, everyone has the right to uh, apply to join other pursuances. Uh, these pursuances, again, are these entities that people can create uh, for collaboration. Uh, uh, there's some examples we have on the site showing kind of what we intend, uh, some, of, some, of the, some of the ways this can be used. A uh, short version is a group like Bikes for Africa that, you know, compile that, uh, uh, you know, searches for donations of bikes and send them to Africa can uh, bring on 100 people very quickly uh, who are volunteers and allow them to coalesce into a system that does these things that they need done. Uh, another example, very different, is people who have no organization, people who are not interested in working for an NGO, have no infrastructure, have no money, uh, can do the same thing that Anonymous did uh, in, in the sense of uh, setting up uh, ideas and applying them very quickly, bringing on volunteers very quickly, but in a way that is less chaotic than the way Anonymous worked. Anonymous and other sort of uh, amorphous movements of the last 10 years uh, they generally go onto an IRC network, uh, and someone establishes himself uh, sort of as an idea person, and someone uh, establishes himself as you know something else, and there's sort of a, a series of relationships. This helps to allow that same agility, that same speed of organization, uh, but while also allowing for a more uh, robust, uh, uh, visible uh, relationship platform. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to, to go into the, the sort of the structures of this without looking at the visual aids on our website. But in the meantime, uh, I, I can tell you a little bit more about who's involved. Uh, we have a board of directors that we've set up here in the U.S. Uh, among our members is Birgitta Johnsditter, the uh, leader of the Pirate Party in Iceland and a uh, member of parliament, uh, formerly of WikiLeaks. Uh, we have a number of former leakers, uh, such as myself. We have John Kiriakou, who is a former CIA agent who uh, uh, revealed the uh, CIA torture program and went to prison for it. We have several academics, several journalists, uh, and uh, that kind of gives you a sense of what our emphasis is in terms of who we want in this. Uh, we're, we're emphasizing crowdsourced research, crowdsourced journalism. We're going to help journalists, some of the sort of uh, more forward-thinking journalists, uh, use volunteer researchers to either help them uh, quickly and more uh, capably uh, investigate a particular subject, or on the other hand, to keep them abreast of things that they not, may not be aware of. Uh, as a longtime media critic and a longtime journalist, uh, I can tell you that there's, and this is kind of visible from the outside, that there are structural deficiencies in the press, especially in the U.S. and England, uh, that have allowed a lot of the corruption, a lot of the, frankly, horrors of the last 50 years uh, to have occurred uh, based on those deficiencies. And those are, those are the kind of things that we can start to correct uh, and, and start to create new models for uh, using the internet. There are, so there are a number of projects, there are a number of sort of basic ideas we have that have either been uh, employed already in a very haphazard way, uh, as well as ideas that our volunteers uh, will come up with and be able to very quickly uh, you know, uh, begin experimenting with uh, using capable people uh, who are interested in activism. So this is a very different uh, platform than anything else that exists. Uh, it, it, it will pr allow activists who do a lot of uh, internet-based organization to stop having to use Facebook, stop having to use Twitter, stop having to use uh, insecure uh, you know, uh, firms that are, you know, oftentimes have a relationship with the U.S. governments or other governments. Uh, there, there's end-to-end -end encryption involved. The fellow who is uh, overseeing the design and the programming is a, a long-time encryption uh, specialist. Uh, out of the sort of open open source technology scene in San Francisco, and uh, we're very those of us who who have looked at the particulars uh, of this framework, uh, those of those of us who have contributed uh, sort of different ideas to how this might work, we're all pretty well convinced by this point that this is something that uh, over the years can serve as the new model for civic participation in places where civics are frankly broken, uh, particularly the U.S. This is a worldwide platform. Uh, we're going to uh, be bringing in people from around the world. Uh, as you have already mentioned, we have a number of Europeans of uh, the Pirate Party in particular uh, on the board of directors or involved in helping to onboard uh, volunteers. Uh, it's something that's frankly, uh, something that's time has come. Uh, I'll just leave you by my noting uh, sort of the, the main 
the central uh, impetus for all of this. Uh, the most important fact of the 21st century, I believe, is that for the first time in history, any, any human being can collaborate with any other human being on the planet uh, very quickly and efficiently. That's, that's an extraordinary change, fundamental change in the environments. And all of our institutions arose in an entirely different environment. That's something that we all kind of know. It's something that, you know, that's sort of obvious if you think about it. But it's not something of which the implications have been fully explored. Uh, and I think we've seen enough in the past 10 years from uh, clever people who have come together uh, to try to make a difference, uh, experimenting outside of, the, outside of the institutional structures to uh, reform our politics, reform our society, uh, to achieve transparency, to expose wrongdoing by powerful actors. We've seen enough to know that there is more that we can do uh, if we just think about the fundamentals, how we organize, how we recruit. Uh, and that's something that this platform will allow everyone uh, who joins uh, to be able to do for themselves. Uh, thanks again for having me speak. Uh, pursuanceproject.org is where you can uh, see the, the general information and uh, sign up. There's sort of a manifesto at a motherboard uh, advice that I wrote a few uh, months ago. There's some uh, other articles here and there uh, at the New York Observer elsewhere kind of explaining this a little bit more uh, wired as well. But the uh, main site, again, is uh, pursuanceproject.org. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure if there are any <laughs> questions and if it will be possible even to... Um, can you hear us, Barrett? I can't hear. Okay, now you can hear us. Okay. <laughs> Clap again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, are there questions? Well, it, the question was, is your, pro, is your project supposed or tool or platform uh, supposed to be widely used? I guess, yes. Yes, uh, uh, eventually. Like, so this, this predicated uh, largely on the, uh, we had a, it was, it was an observation a few years ago, had like Reddit. And when Reddit appeared, it was a few years, the best source of information anyways, because you had a very erudite, very early adapter sort of uh, usership. Uh, the kind of people who went to Reddit early on who knew about it tended to be above average in terms of their ability to contribute uh, ideas or commentary on articles that were submitted. So if someone submits an a news article, you're more likely at Reddit than anywhere else to have people uh, comment, say, oh, this is actually incorrect. Here's a link to something that shows you know, this, you know, th what the actual facts are, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, but over the, over the years, uh, the, the threshold for knowing about Reddit, for joining Reddit becomes lower. Now, it's not true that everyone who joined after a certain point was a less useful contributor than, than the uh, original. But on average, it does seem that there is a period, uh, there is kind of a, a tendency for the average usership to uh, deteriorate, essentially. So this, this aims to kind of solve that. This, this was something where we set out to create something that could grow perpetually over time without necessarily having that same uh, deterioration. And the way that's accomplished is twofold. One is that we start out uh, by uh, onboarding a, a large group of people that we've uh, selected uh, based on, you know, the, these are activists, these are people who uh, are intellectually honest. Obviously, that's a value judgment that we have to make. The alternative is something like Facebook, where you're, you know, you're allowing, you know, uh, open society kind of people to work and collaborate, but you're also eventually allowing in the alt-right or national populists. And you've achieved nothing. Now you've now you've created a mechanism for deterioration, essentially. So this is this is not a political party, uh, but it's something akin. To, it's more akin to a union almost. You do have to agree to a few precepts to join. One is that you're anti-police state. You don't have to tell us what that means, but you just have to accept that. You're anti-drug war. Uh, you ex you're anti-surveillance uh, state. That kind of those three things in this country in particular automatically. Uh, cuts out a large portion of people who would be eventually deleterious to the project. Now, once these people have been brought in that we've chosen, they all have free, free agency to bring on whoever they like. And so that's the mechanism by which it expands. That will also, our, ourselves as the board and, and as the uh, creators, continue to bring on people over time. So it can grow. And eventually you're going to have, you know, you're going to have people who are 
from our standpoint, problematic in the system. But the way the system works is that just by being brought in, you don't necessarily have any role. You still have to join a pursuance. You can create a pursuance if you like. Uh, and to the, but to the extent that the pursuance uh, is, you know, something that is not uh, sort of does not coalesce with the sort of broad open society views, they're going to have very few people who are going to be interested in joining it in the first place. So we, we have several sort of self uh, fail safes in place to prevent this being used for purposes contrary uh, to the open society. And that also, uh, to some extent, alleviate the problems that you come into both institutions and with amorphous groups. Amorphous groups, you bring in lots of people very quickly, that's great, but some of those people are going to cause problems. It's just a fact of life that we saw uh, in Anonymous all the time. It also does help to uh, tamp down on uh, surveillance, uh, that kind of thing. But yes, it's, it's, been, it's intended to grow. Uh, it's intended to become more agile and efficient as it grows, as people create more pursuances and link them together in different ways to share information. It's, 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 it's going to grow more formidable over time, uh, more efficient and more nuanced. Okay, one more question here. Yes. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hello. Is it, is it okay to punch a Nazi? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're gonna stop here because this, the quality is really not ideal. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>